So the Ascent 18 is a phenomenal mini ready run truck, but there's definitely room for improvement. Now, one thing about this is that upgrades for this truck are really expensive. At least the brass upgrades from Red Cat. These portal covers here cost as much as 10 scale brass portal covers cost and these are for a mini truck so today we're going to take our ascent 18 we're going to upgrade it with a bunch of brass parts we're going to change the motor the servo lots of things and find out which of these parts are really the best to get and invest in because in the end the upgrades for our truck ended up costing three times the price of the actual truck so it makes you wonder is it even worth it now we're starting this off by adding our brass parts because they're the easiest to swap out and we're going to add the brass portal covers, the brass inner portal covers that go on the front, and then we're also adding a brass steering link which is going to help with upgrading the servo. Now the portal covers are probably the easiest to change with only four screws to do the swap. There's two extra screws though on the front to do the inner portal covers and then you have to change out the bearings and the drive shafts. It's not too bad and only takes a few minutes. One issue we did have though is those is that the two screws on the top and bottom that attach that inner portal cover to the axle, they kind of bind up with the brass inner portal cover. And so we ended up using Loctite on each of those screws to kind of tighten them up, but then back the screws off a little bit to minimize the amount of stiction in those parts. Now with the steering link, Red Cat gives you these two little O-rings that go over each end of the eyelet to kind of secure in the eyelet. And this is a really easy swap and install. Now, since we had the portal covers open, we also changed out the portal gears to the overdrive set that Red Cat offers. And these portal gears are marked for front and rear on the bags. And there's also new pins included with these gears. And on the rear set, you need to use those pins because they're shorter to accommodate a shorter, smaller gear. These were another really easy upgrade to swap out. And when reinstalling them, we made sure to put some grease inside the portal box before we attached the brass portal cover. Now for how much weight difference this made, the plastic outer portal covers only weighed one gram, but the brass red cap pieces were 15.3 grams each. For the inner portal covers that go on the front, the plastic pieces were two grams and the brass ones were 12.6 added. The steering link was a lot less. The plastic steering link is 1.6 grams and the brass was 4.3 grams. That only added 2.7 grams. For the overdrive portal gears, we didn't weigh them at all. They're gonna be metal and stock and upgraded form. The difference is gonna be minimal. Now for the servo, which is a great component to upgrade in a crawler, we're going with the WP173, which has 173 ounce inches of torque at HV spec. And it's going to be a great upgrade in this truck. And an upgraded servo is a great choice whenever you're going to start adding weight onto the truck, because that'll just be more stress on the electronics. And this servo is going to beast through that no problem. Now, one thing about this EcoPower servo is it's a full aluminum case, but it's going to be longer. It fits in the servo mount on the ascent, no problem, but it sticks out a little bit, resting up on the upper link mount, which is really not an issue. It still bolts into the ears, no problem. There's no binding, it's just a little long. Now this servo includes aluminum clamping servo horn, and on the scale, the stock servo weighed 14.8 grams, and the eco power is 23 grams. So we actually gained a little over eight grams by just swapping out the servo and the horn. Next, we upgraded to the metal transmission gear set because the gears that come with the truck are only plastic, which is fine for how the truck comes out of the box. But if you're gonna be adding weight to the truck or changing out the motor power, metal gears are just gonna be a really good durable upgrade and they're gonna add some weight. Now to get an accurate weight of the plastic gear set, we had to clean them off because they come pretty greasy, so we sprayed them down with motor spray, and then on the scale, those plastic gears weighed 2.1 grams. The metal transmission gear set weighs 10.6 grams, so adding just these gears gained us eight and a half grams. The install for these gears is also really easy. When you swap the gears and reinstall it all, you're gonna wanna add some grease back into that transmission case. Now we aren't quite to that point yet because we're adding in an upgraded motor set. We're putting in the Furitech Unity Pro, which is a 3,500 kV brushless motor that has the ESC built in. It is a really nice premium set and we have the version with the receiver. 
Now a few things to keep in mind. There are no modifications needed. This is a drop-in fit motor system with the pinion gear installed but this motor is going to be quite a bit longer than the stock motor. So when we installed this set in the truck and it was all said and done, the motor and the upgraded longer servo come really close to each other. There is actually clearance there, there's no binding and it will work, but the servo wire comes pretty dang close to the motor. Now we could have left the truck like this and I think it would perform just fine, but we ended up going a different route. Now in a different Ascent 18 upgrade video that I saw here on YouTube, somebody did a motor back modification where you turn the transmission around in the chassis and then you move the battery to the forward location and this is what we ended up doing. Now to do this, you just have to uninstall the skid plate, rotate it around so the transmission now points backwards and then you've gotta pop new holes in the chassis plate up front for the battery mount and those holes need to be a two millimeter. And with this, with the motor pointing back, it gives our servo and motor a lot more space. We've shifted weight from the back of the truck up front and the internal configuration of this truck looks a whole lot more proper and in line with what a bigger 10 scale truck would be configured. You also notice that we mounted the switch on one side of the rock guard. We put the receiver on the other side and then we put the Bluetooth programmer module because the ESC is fully programmable all the way on the back tray where the old ESC unit used to be. The front tray we completely removed altogether. Now, interestingly, when you weigh the electronic components, the stock parts weighed 45.2 grams and the Furitech system weighed 36.2. So we actually lost nine grams in this upgrade. Now for the last upgrade, we're going with tires and wheels. We're gonna use these trio wheels that have a brass ring and they're gonna be really heavy on there. These are beadlock wheels and they come with optional wider hubs in the package. And then we're gonna use these large diameter J Concepts tires with a 63 millimeter OD, which should give us about the same tire size as the stock tires. Now, a couple of things that we did is we pulled the foam inserts out of the front tires and we cut them down to give the truck a little bit flatter, lower pressure effect in the front. And then we used the silver Sharpie to mark those tires. We also used a hole punch to pop little vent holes on the sidewall of each tire before we mounted them up. Now this tire and wheel combo looks pretty great, but the biggest advantage is that it's really heavy and we also use the wide offset hubs. Now one thing about the hub hole where the wheel nut goes is it's pretty tiny and we couldn't get our regular four millimeter nut driver in there so we had to use these little eyeglass set which has smaller tools and that worked out no problem. Now on the scale the original tires which are just glued not beadlocks those weighed 67 grams for the full set and our upgraded weighted brass wheels and tires weighed a total total of 170 grams. Now originally our box stock truck was 436 grams with a 50-50 weight bias, but after all these upgrades, it's 624 grams, which means we packed on 188 grams and now have a 53% front weight bias. Out on the rocks, the extra performance is extremely noticeable and the crawling performance is just superb. It's way better than I expected it to be actually. It's a night and day difference. Now the biggest takeaways is that the truck feels extremely planted in the terrain. It's tipping over less when side hilling. It's climbing and descending better, especially in one of our little hill spots. It didn't wanna make it up before and it makes it up every single time now. The overdrive steering is also very noticeable and it helps out to make tighter turns and I like it a lot. The steering is also extremely powerful. There's no issues, especially when the truck's putting all its weight over on a corner. Um, it, the servo just powers through it. And then the low end motor control is extremely smooth, very precise, and uh, it's just very noticeable. The front tires are also digging in better as long as they're traction. And you can kind of see them fold up and grip on the terrain, which is probably helping with that climbing part that I was talking about earlier. Now with all the upgrades that we added, here's the breakdown of their weights, their costs, and even a dollar per gram cost. And some of these costs are a lot better and some of them aren't. What they're worth to you as the user 
really comes down to what your goals are. Now, if I was doing this, I would say that the very first thing that I would do to the truck is add the brass wheels. It is the least expensive weight to add to the truck. It's down low to lower the center of gravity. You can add any tires you want because some tires are a lot cheaper than the J Concepts, but it's the best value for adding weight and getting the truck to feel planted on the cheap. I would also cut the foam inserts again on the front tires like we did in the video. That seemed to really help out along with venting the tires. I would also add the overdrive gears. They are inexpensive at $20. They help out immensely for tighter turning. They help with climbing. They give you a little bit more control when descending. They are totally worth it. And then I would also immediately do the motor back mod. Turn the skid plate to get the transmission so it's facing backwards. Put the battery up front. That'll adjust your weight bias without having to add any brass to the front axle. It's free and it is especially helpful. These would be the best basic upgrades, I think, to start with for anybody who buys the truck, whether they're a beginner, intermediate, or expert user. Now for me, or anybody who's a more advanced user, that more powerful servo, the brushless motor, and the metal transmission gears would be totally worth it. But only for really serious crawling enthusiasts, people who just wanna drive the car in more challenging terrains and need that extra control and precision and the programmability that you get with the electronics. For me and my skill set and what I want out of a truck, I would say that these items are totally worth it. I might not do them immediately because they're expensive, but I would do them eventually. Now lastly, the red cap brass upgrades, they're so expensive, I, I don't know if they're really worth it. I'm sure they're worth it for some people if you have certain goals or you just wanna make your truck as heavy as possible, but I don't see them as like really essential items when you can just throw on the brass wheels for a lot cheaper, you get more for your dollar. The metal links that Red Cat offers are pretty nice if you just wanna add the extra durability to that area of the vehicle, but I wouldn't spend money on the metal links if you're just wanting to add weight. Overall, are these upgrades worth it? Yes and no, it depends on who you are, what you want out of your truck, and your experience level. I think for us, the truck is really rad, and it was totally worth it. So guys, go check out the Ascent 18 and all the upgrades that we use with our links down below. I'm Brad from A Main Hobbies. Thanks for watching this video and check out these videos for more RC content.